Last Epoch's new mastery, the Rune Master, is downright awesome, and this has to be one of the most versatile builds ever added to the game. One of the more versatile builds added to any ARPG, actually, because there's just so much you can do. The Rune Master is definitely known for his signature flashy ability, the Runic Invocation. However, today I'd like to highlight something else. Frostclaw, or in my case, Lava Claw, an ability that might be a little bit less flashy, but is absolutely no less powerful. I'm going to go over the passives, skill specialization, gearing, blessings, and potential synergies for a Ignite Lava Claw Rune Master. And because I know a lot of people want to jump in and try the Rune Master for themselves, I've gone out of my way to present the build as it is as I was first stepping into Empowered Monoliths. So there's imperfections in my gear. There's things I need to fix but it can still clear the content. I've killed Empowered Mono Bosses, I've killed Shade of Orbis. There's certainly some things like defenses that do need work, but the damage is feeling great and I could absolutely continue scaling the build. When it comes to Ignite, you could say the sky's the limit. So if any of that sounds fun to you, buckle in for more info. And if you decide to pick up Last Ebuck after watching this, then head over to nexusgg slash T-E-N-K-I-E-I, -E -E where your purchase can help to support the channel. But more about that at the end. For now, let's get into a few important mechanics. First up, why am I using Frostclaw? Well, it fires five projectiles. I compared this to Fireball, which wasn't inflicting as much ignites and didn't do as much damage, because Frostclaw can trigger Elemental Nova. And Elemental Nova hits a massive area, so you can clear a large portion of the screen. Plus, it's a giant fire explosion and everyone loves those. So it seemed like a natural fit. Furthermore, Elemental Nova has specific bonuses to Ignite, including Elemental Penetration, Ignite Duration, and Ignites Inflicted. So I cast Frostclaw, hitting the enemy and igniting them. Casting this skill has a chance to trigger Elemental Nova, which hits the enemy and ignites them. And if that's not enough, I've got two more firepower skills in my arsenal. Frostwall, which I guess at this point is Firewall, which is great for utility because it inflicts a powerful dot, counts as branding enemies, enabling a lot of Rune Master abilities, and provides Fire Shred. Oh, and more Ignite, because why not? And then Glyph of Dominion for even more fire damage and Ignite stacking. And so with that, let's get into the passives and skills. So here's my Frostclaw tree. If you want to do Frostclaw Ignite, you really want Lava Talon. This turns all Chill Chance into Ignite Chance and the Cold Damage into Fire. More importantly, it changes Frostclaw's Cold Tag to a Fire Tag which enables the use of the Ignite for Fire Skills affix, something that's going to be very important when you see my gear. So I had to path over to that, and I also wanted to path up to Celestial Conflux for an Elemental Nova trigger. That pretty much defined most of my tree, since I also wanted a Volley of Glass to be able to overlap all of the projectiles. Fill that out, and you've got a couple points left over. I put a few into Bright Frost for additional cast speed and ailment cleansing, and then the rest over into Frozen Rain to reduce the mana cost. Because Volley of Glass gives plus 90%, reducing the base is highly effective at lowering those costs, allowing you to effectively ignore mana. Then for Elemental Nova, I came all the way over to Infernal Nova. This is the cooldown node, which doesn't matter for triggers, or at least doesn't seem to. Then I grabbed Infernal Prism for some penetration, and Arcana Elementorum, I'm pretty sure that's the Latin, for does a ton of elemental damage. If you're struggling for mana, you can also go to Cryomantic Fragility, but I didn't feel like it was necessary, at least in my current gear. I've also got Frostward, the best defensive skill available to the Mage class and all of his masteries. Of course, I'm triggering it with Astonish because I'm bad at hitting my buttons and uh, needed room on my bars for reasons that I'll explain later. I've gone all the way over to Frostward because I was experimenting with this and using it as a cold skill. Uh, I don't think this is actually necessary and I don't think the Fire Aura does any relevant damage. So I'd probably pull those points out and put them into Stalwart Defense or maybe Desperate Defense plus Fuel the Flames. It was an experiment and it didn't quite work out. On my Frostwall, the most important thing is Brand the Invaders. This goes through Pyroglass, so don't worry, it's already handled as Fire. Brand of Invaders is great because it puts a Brand of Trespass on the enemy. The Brand of Trespass lasts for the wall's duration and scales off of your Ignite chance. This is important because there are several passives in Varun Master Tree that specifically work for branded enemies. 
Beyond that, I mostly ran around grabbing utility, and to get a bunch of burst damage while mapping, I grabbed Heaping Cold. On bosses, you'll want to refresh it a little more frequently, and you won't have the 75% damage bonus for a Heaping Cold. But as you're running around your map, it's absolutely a lifesaver and can nuke things like Diamond Matrons. Then last but not least, I also took Glyph of Dominion, and I'm grabbing Flaming Scroll to turn it to fire and allow it to inflict Ignite Chance. I'm also coming over to Power Word Devastation, so it scales off of my raw runes, gaining both damage and area. This is why I have Runic Invocation on my bars, despite never actually casting it. That would cost far too much mana and do very little, at least for my current setup. This is just a nice extra damage button, and while I could do something like charges refresh on Runic Invocation and hard cast and loop it and all that, Right now, I've just been going with Power Word Devastation and pressing the button occasionally. In the future, I would definitely want to experiment with the reset, and I encourage you to do so as well. If you need the extra points, you can always pull them from Amplified Expanse. The two points in AoE is nice, but definitely not necessary, and even one point here for Charges Refresh on Runic Invocation will allow you to use Glyph of Dominion whenever you want. Just be careful to not run yourself out of mana. So that was how I set up my trees. Now onto the passives. So starting off, here are the passives in my mage tree. Scholar for extra health and mana, mostly the extra health for survivability. I didn't need this early on and instead grabbed the resistances, but as I got into empowered monos, and especially after fighting the last boss, I noticed I was dying more than I'd like, so the extra health is absolutely welcome. From there, I also grabbed elementalist to fill out points, and Mage Flurry for additional cast speed. The three point bonus doesn't really do anything because I'm not using either Snap Freeze or Teleport. And then Ice and Fire for Ignite Chance and increased fire damage. Unfortunately, the Chill Chance with Cold Skills does not get converted over because it specifically says with Cold Skills and remember Frost Claws tag run from Cold to Fire. It's okay though, you still get 35% and that's fine. Next up, here are my points in Rune Master starting off with a health and less damage taken from ignited shocked or chilled enemies. Well, personally, I'd be shocked if the enemies weren't at the very least ignited. And then unleashed mana just to fill out a couple extra points. From there, circle of the elements, 100% ignite chance is great. Into freezing point. I haven't really made use of the armor shred to frostbite chance because I feel like I have enough shred from my wall already, but 70% damage over time is pretty good. Then Decree of a Burning Wind. Remember how I said I was using Runic Invocation for raw runes? Yes, this is why. I get 10% more damage multiplicative to bosses and rares, which is a quite handy passive. Then over to Brand of Deception, not to actually apply Brand of Deception, but just for the elemental penetration with damage over time into damage to branded enemies. This is why dropping your frost wall consistently on bosses to brand enemies is so important. And last but not least, Celestial Doom where you get ward versus branded bosses. And stacking that ward allows you to face tank things you absolutely shouldn't be able to. One other thing I was considering is going into rune words, specifically rune word avalanche for endurance threshold per ignite, because I'd be getting about 300 ignites, maybe 400 ignites on a target, which would completely fill out my endurance threshold. I haven't done that yet, but rune words are also important for a different reason. If you wanted to go into multiplayer, you'd absolutely want to invest in them. Runeward Avalanche, for example, is a great defensive buff. On the other hand, Runeward Inferno provides spell fire damage and armor, so both defense and offense provided you're able to shock, or provided that the enemy has shock on them. And last but not least, if you happen to be freezing stuff, Runeward Hurricane is pretty good as well, though I don't think Runeward Hurricane is what I'd really invest in. Instead, if I wanted to play this in multiplayer and was looking for synergies, I'd go for Runeward Avalanche and Runeward Inferno with this node. When you gain a Runeward buff, all allied party members also gain the buff. Plus, it gives Runeward buff duration, so it's very easy to keep it up 100% of the time with minimal point investment. Last up, in Sorcerer, I'm getting Calculated Destruction for some intelligence. Next up, I'm getting Arcane Momentum and Calculated Destruction. 
I don't really need the bonus from Calculated Destruction, it was just a little int for ward retention, so instead you could easily go into Mana Shell and Arcane Momentum, fill out all those points, then head into Pyromancer for Fire Damage and Fire Skill Ignite Chance, and finish off with Lava Mancer for Fire Penetration and Leech. Next up, I want to talk about Geary. Before I do though, I need to mention something important. For common unique items, like the ones I'm going to talk about, Bleeding Heart, the Firestarter's Torch, and Soulfire. If you wish to obtain these, you can go to the Gambler and buy a bunch of bases of the right type. So for Bleeding Heart, it's Amulets. For Firestarter's Torch, it's Scepters. And for Soulfire, it's Relics. Then you use Rune of Ascendance to turn a random item into a unique. Most of them won't be the item you want, but as these are all relatively common and low-level items, you should be able to get what you want pretty darn quickly. Versions with LP are, of course, perfectly achievable, especially as you start to min-max, but once you get started, just throwing on any old basic version is totally fine and will absolutely improve your build, especially because these are great sources of Chance to Ignite, something that otherwise is going to feel a little bit lackluster. I happened to get quite lucky. I dropped a Soul Fire almost immediately. I created a Firestarter's Torch with Rune of Ascendance, and I dropped a Bleeding Heart before I entered Empowered Monos. And just for fun, I ended up taking that Bleeding Heart over to the Temporal Sanctum, nuked Julra real quick, since Tier 1 Julra isn't all that difficult, and turned it into a fun Legendary. It got health, which is good, and Necrotic Res, which probably doesn't help me since I'm super overcapped. But hey, Better to try than just sit around with a default version of the item. Now, uh, let's start talking about gearing in a little bit more detail. So first up, my weapon, Firestarter's Torch. The most important lines here are minus fire spell mana cost. This is why everything is super cheap and spammable. More fire damage to enemies afflicted by spreading flames and increased fire damage over time. These are the good mods. Everything else you can kind of take it or leave it. And if you don't get a Firestarter's Torch, while it is going to be a slight damage loss, any old Scepter or Wand, doesn't really matter between them, that has Ignite Chance, maybe some damage over time, Elemental damage over time, or Fire damage, is also a pretty good stand-in. The next item is really, really important, and that is Bleeding Heart, because you need some source of damage leached as health. Now, if you don't have a Bleeding Heart, there is an alternative. Use the Avarice Gloves from the Quest Urza's Ledger. You get them by turning in the ledger at Urza himself, rather than at the Gambler. Unfortunately, you will have to make a new character and progress to that point if you want the gloves and you missed it on your first playthrough. But I think it's ideal to have the glove slot free and instead use a Bleeding Heart. It's a relatively common item, so it should drop as you play, or you can always try your luck using Rune of Ascendance. The last unique is Soulfire. Uh, I'm using it for the line, chance to ignite unhit with fire skills and necrotic skills. Also, increased fire damage if you've killed an enemy does definitely help while mapping. The Hungering Souls stuff doesn't help at all, because this isn't a Hungering Souls build. But hey, it's still a really good item and common enough that you can definitely get LP. Though, keep in mind there is a defensive tax for using uniques like this, so if you can't get LP versions, balance it and use your common judgment. I'd say if I had to drop any of these, it would probably be the Firestarter's Torch. Not that that's going to help my defenses, but losing the mana cost is at least a thing I can work around, and losing the Ignite Chance of a Leech really will hurt the build. That said, if you're not in Empowered Monos and you don't have a Soul Fire, that's totally fine. I got mine in regular Monos, and it's not that hard to farm as a unique relic. For the rest of my gear, it's um, trash off the floor. I've got a helmet. The important set here is Chance to Ignite on Hit, and then I was desperate for any defenses I could get, so I focused on armor. Chest piece, same deal. Chance to Ignite on Hit, and then Void Resistance, because I needed it to cap. There's no reason that the Necrotic Resistance is on there, just happens to be on there, and I really don't advise it, because it means my item effectively only has two stats. Like I said, trash from the floor. This was a pretty nice drop. I managed to craft it. It dropped with the damage over time and the elemental resistance. I unfortunately at the time needed necrotic res, which was in hindsight a massive mistake. That should instead really be fire or lightning since I'm slightly under cap on those. Though because of how resistances work in last epoch, it's not super punishing to be 9% under. It means enemies do about 10% more damage to you, which 
It isn't great, but it's not going to insta-kill you the way it would in Path of Exile. Or it could be Poison Res, which I also need, and that's why I avoid Majasa enemies. Coming down to rings, I found this. The base is terrible, but 146 elemental damage over time is really neat, and I needed the Poison Resistance. This belt for elemental damage over time, Fizz Res, and I wish I had been able to get the Cold Res higher, maybe drop it elsewhere. Another ring that, uh, I'm going to be honest, I put it on because it had Cold Res on it, and also health. The freeze rate multiplier doesn't really do that much, nor does the mana regen. For boots, gotta go fast, move speed is super important. Necrotic Res is my nemesis, and after I record this video, I'm absolutely taking a different pair out of my stash that don't have Necrotic Resistance and using it to fix my Fire and Lightning. And on gloves, I wanted cast speed, happened to get some Lightning Resistance to help me cap, and re-rolled into Intelligence. My goal here was actually going to be something else damage-wise, but hey, Int isn't terrible, it helps with ward retention, and does give you a couple other small bonuses. Then for my idols, I'm filling in resistances where I can, grabbing chance to ignite on hit. I did get an igneous grand glass idol of electromancy, the lightning suffix, completely useless. The ignite chance on frostwall is very cool though. Not 100% sure if this is worth though, because it does only apply to my frostwall. This is an experiment. So far, it's uh, pretty okay. Definitely better than what I had in its place, which was just some generic fire damage stuff. Uh, not doubled because I don't have 300 mana. Though I'd probably ultimately want to replace it with something like this for chances to trigger elemental nova. Or this for chance to ignite with fire skills. I just don't have any more of these that are good. So I'm using it for now. Then when it comes to blessings... I um, didn't grab a bunch of blessings because I didn't need the drop stuff. So I'm not gonna worry about things that don't increase my character's power. Here, my options were Thirst of the Sun and nothing else super useful to my build. Like I said, never start this video is being made shortly after I unlocked Empowered Monos. I also got the Grand Resolve of Humanity for 14% to all resistance. This definitely helped to prop up my res, and I could have alternatively gone with Persistence of Will to cap Poison specifically. Either way, both are good and especially powerful when you're progressing. Over here, I got Obsidian Body for a little bit more armor, but you could alternatively go with some of the fire bonuses, which would honestly probably be a lot better. I just wasn't offered them when I cleared Spirits of Fire. Then Chance to Chill on Hit, which is Chance to Ignite on Hit. Pretty darn happy with this one from Age of Winter, to be honest with you. And from Lagan, Ward per Second. I'd either go with Ward per Second or Mana, either of which feels pretty darn good. So uh, that's everything on my blessings as they stand. Like I said, this is very much a work in progress, not a finished build. There's plenty of blessings to farm. Now when it comes to gameplay, it's pretty simple. If there are enemies at ranged, fire your Frost Claw at them. If you need to traverse distance, use Flame Rush. This is unspecialized, so it's not doing anything too fancy, but I'm able to use it nonetheless. If there's a tough enemy, like an exiled mage or a boss, drop Frostwall, make sure to brand them, then drop Glyph of Dominion, it'll do massive damage. You'll always have the raw runes, and you don't need to hit Runic Invocation, unless you're going for reset spec that I mentioned earlier. Last but not least, while you're not a Giga Tank, don't be too scared of hits. Flame Ward will prevent a lot of the damage you take, and you build up Ward surprisingly quickly. So, between Flame Ward and just regular Ward from hitting branded enemies, I found that I can tank a lot of hits unless I start giving things damage mods. But with the amount of Ward I'm able to generate even now, I suspect if I get a couple of Ward Uniques and invest into it further, stacking Endurance and Ward could be a really good way to go on this build rather than the low life route. Beyond that, other stats to look out for when improving gear, well, personally, I'd want to drop Necrotic Res, but realistically, the answer is cap all your resistances, then get Life, Crit Avoidance, and Endurance Threshold. In terms of damage, go for Chance to Ignite, Ignite for Fire Skills, or Ignite Duration. And after that, look for increases to Elemental Damage over time, followed by Fire Damage or Elemental Damage. And last but not least, Int, because while it's not spectacular, it's not terrible either. This character has been a blast to play and watching hundreds of Ignites get instantly stacked on an enemy is certainly super satisfying. I don't know if this does the absolute most damage, but it's definitely more than enough damage and has plenty of AoE from triggering the Elemental Novas to be able to clear content and progress smoothly. 
I was particularly impressed with the way the build progressed all the way up to the level 90 monos after I finished leveling. There was of course a little bit of a bump where I tried to do empowered at 70 and kind of got wrecked, but after farming about 10 more levels and switching out some items to actually cap my fizz res, yeah, my fizz res not being capped was probably the issue there and not the build, I had zero issues going into Empowered and doing the first couple bosses, though I'm kind of dreading Lagan since they changed him and I don't know how to deal with that. Sure, after a couple of deaths and a little practice, it'll be fine though. What I really like about this build is it absolutely decimates enemies that are stationary and you just drop the rune, drop the wall, watch them burn. For enemies that are highly mobile, you don't really have great tracking on the Frost Claw, but luckily when you do trigger those elemental novas, there's plenty of AoE to go around. So overall, it feels really nice and well-rounded. Actually, I haven't played many Ignite builds in last epoch, so this was a refreshing change of pace. Now I'm curious, if you've been playing Rune Master at all, what are the cool builds that you've been coming up with? Leave some of your thoughts down in the comments below. And before I go, a special thanks to 11th Hour Games for sponsoring this video. Last Epoch is a great game. I'm always happy to take sponsorships from them, come back, check stuff out. In fact, when I heard that a new character was being added, I was super excited. I didn't expect any characters to be added until 1.0, and I'm really happy for Rune Master. I don't know if in terms of objective power, it's the best character in the game, but it's certainly my favorite due to the versatility and uniqueness of its mechanics. And so again, if you want to check Last Epoch out, head over to my Nexus and purchase it while also helping to support the channel. And after you get Last Epoch, if you want to try this build out for yourself, I'll have a build planner in my Discord. Link to that is down in the description. Be sure to react to give yourself both the notification and community role, then look for the build link archive channel. In terms of a loot filter, I don't have one because I barely bother to make them for myself, and I'm certainly not about to give the garbage that I use to anyone else. With that said, thanks for watching. A special thanks to my patrons and channel members for continued support. With that, I hope you learned something about the Rune Master or his unique mechanics. Get subscribed for more content, leave a like while you're down there, and I'll see you again sometime soon.